Hi, everyone. Um, this is Miss Ginter here again with uh, not quite a lecture, but um, just a little video to kind of explain what we are going to be doing today. So I'm really excited to be teaching you the Po Tweet and Try Clue uh, lesson. For Common Core, you are going to be able to uh, write a narrative to develop real or imagined experiences or events using effective technique vultures and details and well-structured event sequences. Um, you're also going to be able to write routinely over an extended time frame um, and for shorter time frames for a range of tasks, purposes, and audiences. Or in other words, today you will be able to write a po tweet of 140 uh, and 280 characters, as well as a taiku using the 575 syllable pattern that we have talked about so far in class. So without further ado, uh, let's go ahead and check this out. I do have a little funny for you. When it rains, it pose. Um, so I know that it has actually been raining a ton um, recently. So I don't know. I like Poe and I found this funny. So hope that you laugh or smile or just maybe give me a look during class and you think I'm just silly, but that's okay. Um, so I do want you guys to take some notes on this. So you can just continue this in your notes. You're also going to have the Po Tui and Tai Ku uh, packet that I will be giving you, um, but really everything that you're going to need besides the actual assignment is in this PowerPoint and in this lecture video. So uh, here we go. So what is a Po Tui? Um, a Po Tui is a popular form of poetry inspired by the social networking site Twitter. Uh, Twitter, as you guys, most of you know, uh, the users post tweets or like a status update that is limited to 140 characters. And you can create these original poems uh, in your tweets, and thus that's called a po tweet. Um, just a little spin on what a tweet is. So we're going to look at some examples in your packet. So yes, you can see I did not create this, um, but I still use it. It's pretty awesome. So here are some Po Tweet examples. I don't love these poems, so I'm going to show you some additional ones, but these are the ones in your packet. So as you can tell, they have to be 140 characters. Um, again, a character is going to count every single letter and every single space. So this is Twitter poem. The poem creates a space. It hides in a tent in a forest. Making its own bed, it falls asleep in the dark wakes up under a lamp or the sun. Um, the other ones, earth donates, break in a wave train, fallout active, plume cloud spills, red reactors give, cross characters translated, and kanji could say much more. Um, and then the other two um, are just taken from other examples. This one was for an inauguration. Um, this one was just from a book, low pay piecework. The fifth grade teacher and her followers, five classes, 28 in each, all hers, 140 different characters. I love that one because it's talking about a teacher that has five classes, each one has 28 students. So she has 140 characters or students. Um, so those are just some in your packet, but I want to show you some that I think you might actually enjoy. Um, let me get this back to full screen. Oh, there we go. Okay. Um, so the examples I have, we are going to read them, and then I want you to write down and answer these questions uh, with each of the poems. So you should answer the questions for the poem on the left um, and the poem on the right. So this one is by John Green, um, so I think that's pretty cool because he's a great author. But the post tweet says, each of us is a story waiting for a devoted reader who would take us off the shelf and embrace, embrace all our plot twists. So we're going to look at these questions. Does the form of the poem take away or contribute to the meaning? Why or why not? Um, for that poem, you know, I think that that form of 140 characters actually contributes to the meaning because it helps us to stay focused on a central idea that our lives are stories and that we are each meeting people in our everyday lives. And we want them to take us off the shelf, to read us, to embrace um, the plot twists that each of us have in every day life. Um, does limiting the characters also limit the creativity? Um, I don't really think so for this one. I think that it still has a simple idea and it clearly articulates and explains it. 
I think that I would say this form can be valuable because it's focused. It's clear, it's concise, it's direct, it's to the point, it's not fluffy. You're not just telling me a bunch of random words and ordering them together. And then uh, the last one would be your personal opinion. Do you like to read shorter poems? Um, I do. I love looking up, like, they're called posies uh, on Pinterest, just really short little forms that have a significant meaning, that they, they touch my heart, that they mean something. So uh, I went through the one for John Mark Green with you. I want you to, uh, you can either pause this video or come back to it. I want you to answer those four questions for the poem on the left. It says, it's true, you had me at hello. What sucks is you still have me after goodbye. Uh, wow, I just, I think that that really pulls at the heartstrings. Hopefully that has some sort of emotional connection for you. And even if it doesn't, you should still be able to answer those questions. So pause the video and answer those. Does the form of the poem take away? Do you think it contributes? Why or why not? Um, does it place limit on creativity? Why or why not? Can it be valuable? Do you wish it was longer, shorter? Do you like to read shorter poems? Do you like longer? I know most of you hate poetry, okay, but I would still like to know if you prefer long or short poems uh, one over the other. So go ahead and pause the video, take those notes. And again, like I said, as we um, as we look at these poems, every single letter, space, punctuation mark is a character. So like this first part, the it is true, you would say I, T, apostrophe, S, space, T, R, U, E, period. That's already 10 characters and you didn't even say a lot. <laughs> um, and I haven't counted both of these, but I don't believe that these are 140 uh, characters. They're probably less, um, at least this one is for sure. So now we've looked at Poe Tweet, we are also going to go ahead and look at Taiku, or like a haiku. Um, so another form of poetry is called a Taiku, and that is three lines and 17 syllables. That's like a haiku, but it also limits how many characters, including those spaces, that are used. And again, we have no more than 140. In your assignment today, you're going to be doing this for 140 characters, and you're also going to be doing 280, because... Um, Twitter has updated that policy, um, and your your uh, po tweets and haikus can be about anything you want. If you want to relate them to To Kill a Mockingbird, that would be awesome. If you want to relate it to Julius Caesar, even though we haven't really read a lot of it yet, um, or it could just be about life or school or something that you're going through. Totally free choice. So, um, anyways, in a traditional haiku, we have learned this, but the first line is going to contain five syllables. And the second line is going to contain seven, and the third is going to contain five. So that five, seven, five pattern. So again, we're going to go back to the packet and look at those examples. So in your packet, um, they don't have a lot of examples, but raining on Sunday, time to do the spring cleaning, watch raindrops instead. It makes me think of April. Now, if we were to clap that out, we want to make sure it's five, seven, five. So raining on sunday that's five time to do the spring cleaning seven and watch raindrops instead that's five um and the second one plain white pages wait for black ink to carve a path our dreams given life and again we would clap that plain white pages wait for black ink to carve a path, our dreams given life. That is 575. So when you are completing um, these activities and checking out the examples, you need to make sure that you are counting 575. You need to go back and count your characters. And again, characters are not words. Characters are every single letter, space, punctuation mark, uh, even you know periods, commas, apostrophes. Now here are some others, and again, I'm gonna do one with you. I'd like you to answer and write down these questions. Um, now, obviously, um, these do not really have to follow the 140 uh, characters. They, they, um, they can't be more than that, but um, most of them aren't going to be 140. Um, I find that the 575s are sometimes shorter. 
So I'm going to do the first one with you. In spring, flowers sprout. They grow up high to the sky. Sports start being played. Okay, that form, I think that that doesn't really take away. Um, it contributes because it's very simple. It's spring. You're telling me flowers are growing and developing, and it's also a time that sports are going to be played. Now, um, I already have showed you where it's 575, so I'm not going to really clap out those syllables, but you could check that. I think that it, you know, maybe limits it a little bit and places some limit on creativity just because you're not able to go into specific sports or specific flowers, but I still feel like the central idea is evident. Again, the form can be valuable because it is still very clear and articulates a single theme or idea. And again, um, for haikus, yeah, I love short poems. I think they're easy to read, they're quick, they take like three seconds to dissect and understand. So I want you to pause the video and you are going to do the four questions for butterfly thoughts, uh, which is thoughts that come and go like butterflies that flutter, watch them carefully. So go ahead and pause the video. Um, make sure that you answer those questions. And again, you don't have to write the poems down, but you do need to answer the questions. So you might write down like butterfly thoughts poem and then answer these four questions. And again, um, you need to do that for both of these poems in the haiku and both of the poems in the co-tweets. So I do have six tips for you for writing your first haiku or taiku. And um, there's an awesome website that I'm kind of going to walk you through, but I want you to pause the video, write these down. Tip one before writing, obviously read some other ones. Um, do not, okay, do not just look one up on the internet and claim it as your own. I will definitely be able to tell if it's something you wrote or you looked up on the internet. So this is your creativity. Have fun with it, guys. Um, but you can read others if you need inspiration. Two, uh, write your first sentence. Always start from the beginning. Three, we're gonna look at how to structure your haiku. Four, we're gonna get visual with how you can uh, show that on a sheet of paper, which looks pretty cool. Five, experiment with different layouts and then keep practicing. So let's check out this website that I found. I think it's really profound. Um, so we already just talked about step one, writing your haiku, read other people's. These examples are not actual examples of haikus. They are short, but they don't follow the five, seven, five patterns. So. I wouldn't really read most of those. I think only like one of them actually followed the pattern. Um, two, writing your first sentence. So like this says, the first line is the most crucial. Um, and you wanna start and finish strong. Most, if you're writing you know, something about the season or setting is gonna start with a description of that. And then the rest of it's gonna use words related to the first sentence. Um, step three is how to structure this. There are some different ways. You can contrast things. So um, thinking about the opposites in nature, something big versus small, hard rain versus tender leaves. You could focus on the easiest technique, which is when, where, and what. Like, let's see, like this example of spring flowers, you know, that tells me that it's springtime. It's talking about sports, so people play sports. So we're able to answer that who, what, when, where, why questions. Um, here's an example of that. And you want to start by starting with the when, the season or time, the where, the location, a beach, a mountain, and what's happening. Birds are singing, snow is falling, raindrops are flying from the sky. Um, the other form is to narrow your focus. So kind of like we've talked about, you want a single central idea, or you can compare things, use those metaphors, simile, personification, hyperbole, uh, onomatopoeia, extreme exaggeration, alliteration, get creative. Four is to have a visual. You know, if you are describing the raindrops, think about what that feels like and looks like to you. If you're describing food, um, if you're talking about health and wellness and wholeness, if you're talking about uh, God or religion or something that you stand for or believe in, um, you know, maybe write down some descriptive words so that you can create one of your own use that descriptive imagery. Now, my favorite step is step five, which is experimenting with the different layouts. And these look so cool. You can have one line, you can have one line of equally spaced letters um, with no spaces. You can have the step where you go down. You can have visual, like quiet pond frog jumps in, splash. That's pretty cool. It looks like 
the frog is going down to jump in a pond. Um, so feel free on your paper when you are doing this, um, which we'll talk about in a minute, you know, you have these lines, feel free to kind of write it like that. It's super creative. Oh. Right, and then you always want to uh, do step six, which is to keep practicing. Um, you will get a practice today in class, um, but it's always fun. If you really like writing poetry, feel free to do this outside of class and show me anytime. So we are uh, getting near the time where you will have the rest of the class period to do your turn, your assignment. You and your packet are going to see how well you can write a Poe tweet and a Thai clue. Uh, remember, each letter, number, punctuation mark is a single character. That even the spaces between the words, sentences, and punctuation count as a character blank or a line break, uh, break as well. For example, if I had she was lonely and I had a space between she and was and was and lonely, that is already 15 characters because we're including the spaces in every single letter. By the end of the period, you are to turn in your packet with your name on it and your class period. You're going to write one Poe tweet of 140 characters, one Poe tweet of 280 characters, and one Twaiku of 140 characters. Though, remember, the Twaiku has to follow that 575 pattern of syllables, the um, counting those syllables with your collapse. You don't also have to post these on Twitter. If some of you have Twitter and you feel so inclined to post them on Twitter, you are certainly welcome to do that. I always love seeing those. So let's look at your worksheet. Um, so what do I mean by that? So these are your packets um, and you're going to put the title here. You can feel free to write that later. Now these, okay, these little, there it goes, these little lines. Every single one of these is your character. So like if you had, let's see, blessed is the girl, period. Okay, it would be B, L, E, S, S, E, D, space, I, S, space, T, H, E, space, G, I, R, L, space, period. Okay, all of that blesses the girl. And that would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, these are in 10, 10, 20. That'd be 21 characters already. Now it says um, that you can just leave that space blank for skipping. You could also use a backslash if you want to indicate a new line. And that does count as character blank because even if you didn't put a break in the line, you would need that space. So you could either put the slash um, or you can just you know leave that space. Um, and it has to be limiting to 140 characters. Uh, this is already measured out for you, I believe. So this is 10, 20, 30, 40. Yeah, so this is exactly 140 characters. Um, you are allowed to have less, but I do require that, you know, you at least go halfway down the page. Okay, so at least 70 characters. Um, you're going to do the same thing for the 280 characters, and I would prefer that you at least get to almost 280 as well. Um, at least that I can tell that you took effort and didn't just take like three seconds to throw something on the page. And then finally, for your twaiku, remember to have fun. You can use these haiku, twaiku, visual forms, steps, uh, whatever you want. And it has to limit yourself to 575. Make sure to check yourself with your clapping that you have the right number of syllables. Don't forget to count your characters. Make sure you didn't go over the 280. It was formerly 140. Um, so that's why this one says 140 for the Twaiku. Again, every single space letter number punctuation mark counts as a character. I know that some of you are listening to this, rolling your eyes at me, like she's already said that 12 times. But every single time I check these, somebody does it wrong. Um, and does not have the right number, doesn't count their syllables. So it's a lot trickier than you might think. Um, if you share it on Twitter, you could use a backslash rather than the return to indicate a new line. Um, for example, this was a poem somebody posted, plain white pages wait slash for black ink to carve a path slash our dreams given life slash. So those are just examples. But yeah, I hope that that um, makes sense for you guys. This is the Poe tweet and Twaiku. 
And as always, if you have any questions, let me know. Um, I just decided to film this because I know that um, for those of you watching this, potentially, uh, depending on what year it is, um, you have taken a quiz and I wanted to make sure that you each have your individual amount of time to work on this. Again, it is due by the end of the class period into the tray. Hope you guys have a great day. Thanks.